right, so I'm going to show you how to LFO anything in Ableton without Max for Live. And there's nothing wrong with Max for Live, but I feel like it does use up more resources and tend to make Ableton a little bit less stable. And there's some benefits to doing it this way because you're going to be able to put all your LFOs right in your clips. So let me just show you what's going on. Um, there's kind of two components for this. So I'm doing the LFOs here in the modulation section. Now you'll notice that there's these two buttons since Live 10.1, which are the automation button and the modulation button. What the automation button is, is it's these red lines and that's gonna control where this knob is twisted. Now, uh, so just take a look. All right, it's twisting around and it's going to be twisting according to this red line. All right, now the modulation button is going to control the blue line that comes up to this black line. So you notice that this blue line doesn't go all the way up to the black line. That's because the playhead, it's only at about 50% where it is right now, 55.4%. All right, so as this loops, and this is looping every 16th of a beat, all right, every 16th of a bar rather, or every 16th note, uh, you know, it'll sound like this. I just exaggerated this LFO so you'll hear it more now. All right, so what I've done is I have unlinked this right so this link button will make it so that the the loop length for the automation doesn't or the modulation doesn't have to be as long as the loop length for say the notes right so these notes are eight bars in length um, in terms of what they're looping but this is just a 16th note right this is all eight bars but we could just as easily unlink this and we could shorten this down so that now our knob is just going to turn in this pattern every single bar, right? Or we could have it do it like this, right? And so you can see that that format knob is now twisting much more regularly, right? So um, in this way, we've actually created an LFO, so to speak, for the automation as well as the modulation. So we have sort of two LFOs, right? One modulating the other kind of. So there's a lot of ways to do this. You can do this with basically any parameter, right? You right click on it, you'll see these show automation, show modulation buttons. So again, all you need to do is take a loop as long as you want it, right? You would unlink this, you just make the loop length as long as you want it, right? Say I want it to be, um, I don't know, just like two beats long. I set the length to two beats and I draw in whatever I sh shape I want. Right now, this is nice because this is a custom LFO, right? You can draw the shapes however you want, um, which is more control than you get over a lot of LFOs. You can also right click since te Live 10.1 and insert these shapes. So, say you wanted a sine wave, right? You could do it like that. You could scrunch this up. You could tilt it down, you know, whatever you want. Um, but you have a lot of flexibility with the new features in Live 10.1, especially in order to shape these LFOs in a custom way, however you want. Um, so they tend to be very flexible as well, and then you get to put them right in the clip. Now, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is that because of this, there's a trick where you can have all these different LFOs that you've set up, right? And then you can have them jump from one to each other right in the middle. So as it's looping through, you can just change from one LFO to another. Uh, so the way to do that is with this legato button. Now, this legato button is different than the legato button that makes the notes longer, right? So you'll notice that if you go in here, this legato button will make the notes long, but there's a second legato button right here. This is launch legato, and what that does is instead of when I hit play, right, if it's off, every time I hit play, it's gonna start from the beginning of the clip. It's always gonna start at the beginning of the clip every time it gets hit played. Right, but what if I don't want that? What if on bar three, I want it to start from bar three on the clip? Well, that's what this legato button does. And as long as this legato is on, even when it's jumping from one clip to another, right, we might be at bar two, right, and it will follow us along the way. Right, so now the advantage of this is now, right, we could make different LFOs for each one of these. Right, this one could be like longer or something like that. And then maybe this one um, will also make longer, but will also make it more like stepwise. Right, so then we could jump between these, like sequence them how we want, or we could use the follow on actions to go between them randomly. Right, and we'd have different LFOs working on this same form parameter. Um, but the automations would be the same, 
right? They'd still be this long thing, and as we jump between them, right? We're we're staying where we want to be in the clip, but we're going to get these different automation parameters. So we can jump between the LFOs at will. Another button that you might want to look at for that is this quantization, right? You can choose the quantization. If you put it on none, then it will instantaneously go from one to the other. And so you can switch LFO shapes immediately, um, or you can quantize to it like a beat, and then it'll always start at the beat, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, so hopefully that was useful. Um, you know, you can basically do this with anything. You can't do it with pitch bend. There might be a couple other parameters that you can't do it with, but the vast majority of parameters you can, you know, do this with and with the modulation and the automation by unlinking the loop length of those envelopes, right? You can make these loops as long as you want, the shapes custom however you want. Um, you can have a couple of them per parameter and you don't have to use Max for Lab at all. All right, love you guys.